You're listening to Best Forever's, a podcast for kindred spirits, a podcast that encourages you to love more on your friends and to further consider the issues that plague your friendships. I'm Elisa Lucas, and today I'm inspired to do something new. And I was inspired by my friend Crystal, who's here with me today. Say hi. Hi. That's Crystal. Hello. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) So what Crystal inspired me to do was, well, tell the story of the message you sent me. We try to find the, because it was talk to text. Yes. Or it was um, not talk to text. It was a recording. It was a recording. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm driving and I listen to a history podcast. It's Stuff You Missed in History Class. Oh, yeah. And it's my, probably besides a couple like serial Yours. I was going to say best forever. Exactly. (laughs) Excuse me. The one I'm on. Um, And they always talk about pairings of people. Normally, their stories have a focus on an event, but they do have like friendships or Mm -hmm. partnerships of some sort. And I was like, well, wait a minute. What if, you know, Elisa did like friendships major ones throughout history. Yeah. And we just like researched it and talked about it and Mm -hmm. throw in maybe what was going on at the time. Well, Uh, I didn't go all that far for today. Well, (laughs) that's okay. (laughs) Because you could go, I mean, history, you could go deep if you need to. Oh yeah, real deep. Deep, (laughs) yes. Um, And I always think history is important to bring up in any context. I mean, any podcast really could cover some sort of historical point of view. view. Right. And let's be honest, what do we learn about historical friendships in history class? Not much. Enemies, maybe. Well, it's probably because of Hamilton. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Hamilton and and Aaron Burr. (laughs) But, you know, like, you hear about certain things, but you don't think about, like, how people thought about, developed, had connected, Mm -hmm. whatever their friendships were at any point in history, what do we truly know about it? Right. Because I was trying to think of like some partnerships. I think a lot of them probably started with business. Yeah. You know, they're two people in business that, or they were two people like, oh, let's go into business together. And either they were friends beforehand or they developed a friendship after. Yeah. So that's probably as close as we ever heard. Yes. About Or falling out, maybe. Yep. So there's some probably some really good ones out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so, (laughs) you know, here I am driving. I was coming back from Detroit. Yeah. And I was like, well, I cannot text. I do not text. (laughs) That's your PSA. Yeah. (laughs) Public service announcement. You can wait to text. Text Text leads to Rex, right? Right. Check yourself before you text yourself. No, okay. I'm going to have to workshop that. (laughs) Right. Uh, But yeah, so I record this. I thought haphazardly a message. <laughs> I was like, we could talk about it later. It's fine. And then I think later that night you sent me a message like, yeah, yeah. you know, this would be cool. Well, first off, I have to say when I get any of those voice memos in a text, I'm like, because you can do a voice memo and then text it. But then there's also one where you can do it right in the text message. Yeah. And sometimes I get ones from like someone else and it's just like, mm, and you're like, was that like a butt text? text? Right. <laughs> so I was like, is she texting me? I was like, maybe she's in the truck of the car. I'm like, this is where I'm at. I've been kidnapped. <laughs> like I was like, you don't usually see no. that, right? No. So, but I was like, this is a great idea. And I actually had that idea to not saying like, mm, I had that idea of ours. But I had thought about it because The Dollop is my favorite podcast, yeah. which has Dave Anthony and Gareth Reynolds, yeah. where Dave reads the story to Gareth, and Gareth does improv and responds to the story. Yeah. So when I had Gareth on, which was episode 25, The Devil Inside You, yeah, I wanted to write like a real brief one and have him respond to it, but I just didn't have time to do it. Yeah. And so I was like, yes, I'm going to do this. So I talked to my dad, who's really into history. I did some yeah. Google searches. I have a list of them. I'll yeah. ask listeners to... Let me know or if there's any um, podcasts out there that deal with history that would like to come on. Oh, yeah. Crystal and I want to hear your stories because I think this will be a reoccurring partnership is um, having Crystal on. But I feel like next Mm -hmm. time you should read me a story. (laughs) Yes. I need to because I would be geek to look through. And do all the research. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, because I haven't done that in a while. But also, we went to see Dunkirk together. Oh, my God. That movie was so good. The sound in that movie was just so moving. (laughs) to what was happening on screen that I just... I think we were both at our edge of the seat. The entire time. time. Like, right from the (laughs) get-go. It gets you. I wish history was more like that, but that's for a different podcast. Yeah, you need to... (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, we need to get people to make history real sexy, even though history is like, why are we the worst? And why do we ever repeat the history yes. or uh, whatever yes. the case might be? But I just thought this is a really cool idea. And with the podcast I do, I think there's so many different things that can be done to talk about friendship yes. that... We might not do this every other week, but it, it happens enough to get people interested in different relationships. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm also recording with Kate. One of our favorite things is Lifetime Movie. So we're going to watch a movie and then talk about it. Yeah. There's so many things that can be done. We can critique movies. We can interview friends. Mm -hmm. We can talk about friendship origin stories. People are like, how do you come up with ideas? Or is there an end to this? And I'm like, the list is infinite right now. Like there's yeah. so many friendships that have existed, um, that exist now mm -hmm. and will exist in the future. And there's movies and there's books and there's history yes. and there's, there's just so much. And, and I think that's, what's so cool is that friendship mm -hmm. is all around us. We just need to open our eyes to it. Well, and ever since you did this podcast, I keep telling you like, what if we did this? <laughs> yeah. Why which can't is, we do this? Which is you what know? I love. That's yeah. why I'm inspired because it's like, I've never done anything like this. This is, mm -hmm. um, the most researched, episode I've done where you're like, don't you do research? And I'm like, well, you have to remember that friendship is more of my subject matter area True, as right. a professor and just in life as a brand, if you will, that I just love friendship. Right. So history, it's a little, I love history. I mean, yeah. my dad's a history buff. So I feel like that rubbed off on me. And I feel like there's a lot of things that I liked in classes and, and things that I wanted to know. And but it's one of those things like I don't do a lot of research on the topic. And so yeah. this one might be heavy with sources because I'm trying to figure out what that balance is for the podcast. So right. we'll, we'll see how this one goes. Well, <laughs> and, and let me, as a history person, thank yes. you for that. Because yes. I think... Well, I'm a teacher. I can't not cite my sources. Well, thank you. I mean, <laughs> well, in the land of fake news. Uh, <laughs> well, just so that people you know, can... Look at my sources and say, That's it. this source might not be very good, but like these six sources all say the same thing. So what she said here is mm -hmm. probably fairly generally agreed upon in the field. Doesn't mean it's true. It might be agreed upon by historians. I mean, because yes. we weren't there, you know, where wherever point of time we'll be talking about today. Ooh, interesting. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Yeah. But yeah, this thing is exciting. And then if people do want my sources, I do my best to cite them, I and you know I put them in my notes that I'll be using today, but I'll also have it on bestreperspod.com so people can go check it out in the show nice. notes. So, I mean, I'm a teacher. I want to give credit when credit is due. Right. And I'm still really balancing that sort of how do I tell this story with my flair and use the information um, yeah. from there. So I'm excited, but I think that the listeners need a, one history lesson before that. Oh, okay. And that is our history. Yes. <laughs> How did we become friends? You can't come on here and not tell our, our friendship <sighs> origin story. I, I knew you were going to ask that, and I was thinking all day <laughs> about... The homework you have for the podcast right, tonight. <laughs> right. Um, and our history is, I mean, it's still new. Big. <laughs> no, not big. No, 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 no. But... I was like, where? Okay, so we met through Sarah. Sarah who Grandstaff, Sarah. who was just on the episode with her friend, friend Jen. Jen. Yep. And I think the first time where I remember us, like, clicking was Sarah did a murder mystery. <gasps> yes! <laughs> Dinner. I killed her. She I was the murderer. And yes. it was her birthday and she was the murdered. She was my prey. Yes. I was a veterinarian. What were you were like a rocker? Right? I was a rocker that was a germaphobe, which <laughs> was awesome because I just w carried around hand sanitizer and I wore gloves because you, Yeah, we you had know? to find pictures. I know I have yeah. pictures of me because it was elaborate to come mm -hmm. up with how do I like? I have my name tag that Sarah made for us at yes. work, so I'll grab it. But I remember bringing the Fisher Price doctor thing that my brother got me when I got my PhD. What did you have in your hair? I had like feathers. Yes, yes, and I wore a tweed jacket because I was a doctor, uh -huh. and I couldn't remember. I think I was a vet, but I might have been a PhD. I don't remember, but I borrowed yeah a tweed jacket from my colleague Elizabeth. Right. Uh, but yeah, so it was a lot of fun to get dressed up. But I usually. Yeah wear my hair the same way all the time and, you know, and yeah. having things available to make myself into this. And so I'm trying to remember what the name was, but that was a lot of fun. That was a fun night. Yes. And it was different. Like, that's the thing is a part of the episode that Sarah was on, Like Attracts Like, which was episode 35. 
And I feel like her and Jen, for example, just encourage really unique ways of being friends. And like a murder mystery isn't exactly all that like, oh my God, I've never heard of that. But the thing is, Mm -hmm. I would never usually do something like that. No. And I I had done one before uh, for like a New Year's Eve. So I kind of knew the logistics, you know, what you were going to do. But I mean, really, it was kind of a fun way to meet people because I remember, uh, (laughs) I think... Your character was um, shady as hell. Yeah, well, <laughs> was. But I remember at one point you were sitting next to me and my coworker Kayla was sitting next to me and I was like, wow, we instantly. Like, yeah. I, I really. Vibing. Exa- yeah. And I was like, well, this is because you're in character. And yeah. You're just having fun. And <laughs> yeah. There's no really restrictions. Yeah. And then we got done and we were like talking about. You know, how you did it and what if this person and the clues we had yeah. and everything. And so I was like, I remember that. And then we just hung out. I feel like Sarah. we, yeah, through Sarah. Yeah. And I would say that the instant click, I think it's because we both also have easy laughs. I think we're a lot of joyful fun. Can, yes. I, can I put that out there? I think I so. think we're a lot of fun. Right. Yeah, <laughs> we are. I mean, we're a hoot. <laughs> And old, apparently. Well, um, <laughs> I you do say the cat's meow. People have heard say me. I'm, You're the bee's knees. bees. <laughs> That's why I love history. No. Like, <laughs> I bet you love like the history of language and stuff too. Oh, so all that's, sorts. Yeah, Just anything. <laughs> The history of pop. I'll I'll watch it. Oh, I did watch the history of beverage. For those of you who don't know what pop is, you're wrong, <gasps> and you're clearly not from Michigan <laughs> because we mean soda. For those of you who live in other yes. places, and um, yes. for those of you in the South, a Coke. <laughs> a I Coke mean, is not, how can Pepsi be on board with everything being called a Coke? They should There's be sue. That's right. what they should do. They should yeah. sue. Right. I remember when I was sixteen. We went, or 17, we went on spring break to visit my brother who was in film school in North Carolina. And when we were there, all right, we're in North Carolina and it's kind of awkward the fact that it's the South, but you're in North Carolina, which that's confusing. Right. But we went into this restaurant. So we went in and the lady was like, what do you want to drink? Yeah. And I was like, what do you have? She's like, Coke, 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 Sprite. And I was just like, a Coke, Coke Sprite? Right. You're not even being efficient. It just doesn't, a Coke, Pepsi, I was like. That can't be cool with Pepsi. <laughs> no. A Coke Mountain Dew? Coke Mountain Dew. No. <laughs> For, I just imagine them put together. No. Like, that just wouldn't. <laughs> I'll have a water, water just s- as a protest. Yeah. No, I mean, I'll accept in other countries, like, Diet Coke is called Cola Light. I'm on, okay, I'm on board as long as I that can get sense. some sort of pop caffeine when I'm in your country. We're right. good. <laughs> right. And where's the cutoff with yeah. that? Yeah. Like, is there a city that's like, no, if you go two steps back. <laughs> Where's the boundary? Yeah, well, that's yeah. pop. <laughs> and if you're coming down here, it's so, like, okay. Yeah. yeah, maybe we'll have to do the history of pop just to say that if you're not on board with us, you can't be friends. You can't sit with, with us. us. Nope. <laughs> no, or at least not drink with us. Yeah. That's, that's what do you minimal. call a Coke and Captain? Can I have a Coke and Pepsi Captain? <laughs> like, I mean, oh, geez, just too Louise, much. Too much. No. <laughs> but we do drink a lot of pop together because we go to movies and we, we just saw the Jurassic Disappar- World, The Fallen Kingdom. Yeah, right. But I feel yeah. like we spend a lot of time together. We play games. We yeah. Lots of laughing, lots of movies. Um, you're constantly a motivator for um, working out even oh, though I'm thanks. still donating my money to Planet Fitness. <laughs> hey, I do too, actually. So it's <laughs> well, all good. This is, see, this is why we're friends. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I think the friends that I mean, I, I appreciate all my friendships, yeah. you know, to a point. But what I like about you and I is that it doesn't have to be every day. No, Those are the we're ones. Good. Yeah, pick it, it up. That's it. Yeah. Like, what was going on? Yeah. How is this going? Let's plan this thing. Yes. You like to have um, events at your house. Um, I've been to several. Yeah. Um, and most recently, just a couple of weeks ago, we had a brunch, brunch. And it was a fantastic time. Yeah. You know what was great about that is... The mimosas? Yeah. Well, all the Tell alcohol. people about the mimosas that you had. I mean, it was the, the champagne peach. and then... But it was peach... Peach, peach something. Yeah. yeah. With orange uh, juice. Mm-hmm. It was the bomb. Yeah. I finished that off quick. <laughs> When you all were done, I was ready to go. <laughs> well, I, you know, I had to drive later, so I was like, oh, true, yeah, I guess like, I'll have one. one, right? <laughs> but uh, that was fun because I have a lot of different. I don't brag myself. I have a lot of different I'm friend a lot groups. Of friends. Right. Yeah, I'm really popular. No, <laughs> not really at all. But it it was neat to have like some of my res life 
folk, mm-hmm. and then like you and, yeah. and Sarah and everybody clicked. Yeah. And yeah, it's sometimes hard to have friendship groups merge. Yes. And, um, but I think that as the point was made, uh, Ashley and I talked a little bit about that mm-hmm. in our episode, Does and Blows. Yeah. Which that was a great name. Okay. Um, but we talked about just having lots of different groups that, and so you have different types of friendship in different areas for different reasons. Mm-hmm. And then when I talked to Sarah and Jen and Like Attracts Like, it's this idea that your friends um, are great. So I met some new people. They were hilarious. Yeah. They're like you. And so I was like, of course I like them. They're fun. Right. You know, and so it's like if you're a good friend and you have picked friends, I'm going to assume that you've also picked great friends. And True. so um, yeah. it's nice when all those things merge together. It doesn't always happen, though. And and, that, and that's okay. I mean, you can mm-hmm. still, you know, appreciate that person, you know, like for what it is. But I liked it because we were ta- swapping stories. And I think it's neat with us being in higher ed too, that you have a perspective from being a faculty member and then we have the student affair side and we need more of that. Yes. (laughs) Crossover. Well, Uh, and just to clarify, higher ed is higher education and res life is residence life, which is what people used to call dorms or dormitories. So just to anyone who's in maybe a different country who's like, they do what? What? (laughs) They're getting high. Yeah. (laughs) And education. What? How does that work? Yes. <laughs> I know I got to quit talking in alphabet soup. Yeah. Well, we so normally do. it just rolls off your tongue. Yeah. But the right. communication person me is like, okay, we need to love some people know yes. what that means. I right. mean, they probably don't always understand what all I'm saying. But hey. we, and that's probably going to continue today because I'm going to wreck some pronunciations. Oh, hey. So. They do that on Stuff You Missed in History. It's okay. Pronunciate. They, they well, they was, they say right off the bat, like you did. Oh, like, I have hey. a spiel about that right. in here. We don't know. We're su- you know, and then they, I feel so bad for them because they get so much mail. Well, yeah, people. Dave Anthony of the Dollop is always like, oh, I'm going to get 10 emails from people that are experts <laughs> in water about how I didn't do this thing. Right. <laughs> you know? So it's like, okay, yeah, that's what's going to happen. So yeah. do you have any idea what friendship I am going to talk about today? No. I feel there's props. There are props on the table. And this is, in fact, a audio podcast, but we'll get some pictures and yep. you'll, I'll reveal and see if Crystal can figure it out. I kind of feel like it's a test because I was a history major, so I feel like Ooh. I should know. Okay. But, so in history, if I show you this item, uh huh. What does, what does it reference? There is a cake. Cake. Do we get to eat that later? Yes, we do. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Cake. Wait, well, there's... Wait, I'm going to think about, uh, you know... There's uh, a famous quote about cake. There is. And that's the... Uh, Merle, Marie Antoinette. French. Marie and, Antoinette. Yeah. Is yes. that what we're talking about today? Yes, we're talking about Marie Antoinette. Ooh, and I got to dig back. I, I got to dig I back to my cake, history. And it's a gold cake because I was just in Versailles with Tara when we went on our friendship trip in Paris and everything yeah. was freaking gold. It doesn't oh. mean it's gold. I think that just means it's a yellow cake, cake, but they make it fancy. Yeah, they're making it fancy. So, yes, yes. we're talking about Marie Antoinette today. Oh, she's fascinating. <laughs> she's fascinating. fascinating. Actually, and a I'm, lot of women in history are just fascinating. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. I was like, okay, I have to go with um, some ladies because yeah. first off, what do we know about women in history or do we hear about them? And then also just the idea that I was just in France and then they were won the World Cup. Woo, woo. Well, I mean, if did. England couldn't make it to the finals, then yay. Mm-hmm. And then it was just the Bastille Day, which is a national holiday, which is relevant to today's topic. Woo. So when I told Tara what I was doing, she's like, great timing. <laughs> right. Great hey. timing. So we are going, I'm going to tell you the story of Marie Antoinette and her best friends. <laughs> so I feel like I'm at school, but like the good kind. <laughs> well, yeah, there's cake. And now that the top is off, I can smell it. So it's like, let's make this the cliff note version. <laughs> sure, right. Or let's stop and watch the, the movie. Yeah. So, okay. So feel free at any time to jump in. Okay. You can ask me questions, and I'm going to be like, uh, let's phone a historian friend. Sure. Um, and if and then we can discuss some of it, too. So, yeah. Um, and as I mentioned before, I am sight-heavy just because I want to give credit when credit is due. So, yes. And uh, we'll do our best on names. 
Yeah, just I have a cheat sheet for pronunciations here. I yeah. did my best. Okay. So according to the movie trailer from the 2006 Sofia Coppola directed film, quote, at 15, she became a bride. At 19, she became a queen. And at 20, she became a legend, unquote. Marie Antoinette. Maria Antoinette Josepha Johanna. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> why, Those were why, names. Why do we have 90 names? Can we just stop there? <laughs> well... <laughs> because we needed to recognize I mean, back then. Well, she's also you know. a queen, hair flip, sure. right? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So she's best known as Marie Antoinette, thank God, yep. because that's what I'm going to use for the rest of us. Okay. Mm-hmm. She was born in Vienna, Austria in 1755, and she was one of 17 kids. Hey, parents are getting wow. amazing. <laughs> This is, no, everyone, this is before advances in all sorts of medicine. Yeah, yeah seriously. Yeah. Wow, they all lived? Uh, no. Uh, okay. I guess that's, after listening to the doubt, my answer is going to be no. And then she gave birth to four children, but two passed, passed away. away. Um, but again, this is a story of friendship. So mm. um, I am actually not going to talk about her children very much, but I do that's know okay. that from my research is that not all oh, of her okay. children live. So and very that, common. Yes, very mm-hmm. common. Um, as they say in the dollop, <laughs> don't get too attached. Right? Right. Uh, so she was born in Vienna, Austria in 1755 and Larry, uh, later married the French king Louis the Sixteenth when she was just 15 years old. He was also a teenager, so we got mm-hmm. nothing but uh, child brides. Yeah. Mm. Biography.com called Marie Antoinette. Uh, I almost said hashtag. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> History through hashtags, folks. <laughs> hashtags. Yeah. Um, how about quote? <laughs> oh, got it. <laughs> the last queen of France who helped provoke the popular unrest that led to the French Revolution mm-hmm. and to overthrow the monarchy in August 1792. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. I think most people, no matter their knowledge level of the queen, they have imagery of someone who really symbolized a lot of excess and lavishness and yes. sort of the high life and the Sofia Coppola film, which was oh. maybe not the <laughs> most exciting. Like to me, it wasn't. And I haven't seen it since it came out in the theater. I, I do own it on DVD, but I don't yeah. think I ever watched it. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll sell it in our yard sale. There we coming go. Up in- Someone weeks. would enjoy that. <laughs> uh, maybe yeah. I'll just keep it for a souvenir for this day. But yeah. I just remember that movie being so big and beautiful and just huge cakes, huge hair, huge dresses. And yes. so I think that's what people think of her. And I think mm-hmm. there was some level of that was the case. Mm-hmm. There are also some sources that say that she actually – you know, didn't have as many shoes as people would say that the the palace was full of feces and after a couple of days they'd have to get rid of their shoes. So it wasn't necessarily like, I want all these shoes. It was like, it's gross in here and I need new shoes. Yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately that imagery or the symbol of the, cre- uh, of the queen resulted in a target of vicious rumors and scandal for the, the queen. Yep. And uh, so, for example, Marie Antoinette's quote is saying, let them eat cake in yep. response to being told the French people were without bread. Yeah. Hence why I have the cake here today. Mm-hmm. Um, every source I came across, though, and again, you can find all my sources on bestforeverspod.com, all agree that crediting this quote to the queen is a falsehood. Yeah. That it is long before her time and used in many different ways. And I'm sure there are podcasts that actually talk about this quote in its history <clears throat> mm-hmm. and probably do it better than me. So, <laughs> Hey, I think you're doing great. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I was like, we still have several pages. I feel okay. like I'm listening to a podcast, actually, <laughs> but I am on one. So yeah. I got to focus back. Like, wait, this is all real now. Yeah, this Crystal. is happening yeah. now. Right. So <laughs> things that you might um, say when you're listening, you can say so now, now into true. the mic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I like it. But, but perhaps because of the perception of her and um, actually being that way <laughs> and other extenuating circumstances, she had a difficult time as being a public figure. Mm-hmm. Um, History.com indicated that her marriage was difficult and as she had very few official queen duties, mm-hmm. she spent most of her time socializing and indulging in her extravagant tastes like gold cake, perhaps. Well, they're teenagers. <laughs> well, that's another thing, You know, yeah. like they're... I mean, even at that age, you grew up fast because you had to, but the reality is they're still kids. Yeah, and what, you know, I could have gone a little bit more into her background before she married Louis and and that sort of thing and and their marriage, but 
I, I have to imagine that was she prepared to, to be a queen, <laughs> you know? And like, how does one prepare to be a queen at yeah. such a young age? And like, she got married when she was 15. What were you like when you're 15? Awkward. <laughs> I mean, that's what my first thought was like to be married. <laughs> yeah. You know, and of course it was different. It was different. I mean, yeah. you didn't live that long. So yeah. Uh, you got to keep it moving. <laughs> you, you, exactly. You got to get things done. So you can't say something like, you know, you can wait to date until you're older. No, you no, got to get it moving. Get moving. Right. If, and you, if that's your thing. Right. I mean, I don't, you, you don't, don't have, have to do, do it. it. No. But I mean, they probably did then. So. Right. So, but I mean, I can imagine all, well, and, you know, throughout history, you know, to be in that level of authority, or mm-hmm. I don't think anybody truly feels prepared yeah. to take that over. I can't so, even, I mean, Joffrey from Game of Thrones, he clearly was not, uh, should not have been in charge of anything. No, so no, ever, no. <laughs> it's a great literally, show too. He's literally the worst. Yeah. So to describe some of her, the combination of so- socializing and being indulgent, she had a model farm built on the palace grounds so that she and her ladies-in-waiting could dress in elaborate costumes and pretend to be milkmaids and shepherdesses, which I didn't know was a word until I did this research. Yeah. And I didn't know that people built model farms. So That's, now, Crystal, I don't know what you're doing this weekend, but we probably don't need to build a model farm. We can probably find one nearby. We just need to find some milkmaid outfits <laughs> for our socializing. You know what a good time is. <laughs> Let me tell we you. We know how to party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like at 17, whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 17, okay, she was 15. 1770. We're going to party like it's 1770. Well, she would have been a little bit older. 1774. (laughs) I love it. Oh, my gosh. Like, seriously. But I think that also led to the idea that that she was into art and theater Mm -hmm. and those sorts of things. But just imagine the level of boredom you would have when you have literally no duties. You have this huge palace. I went to Versailles recently. And I remember me and Tara, it was really hot that day and there's a lot of people. So we were kind of in a bad mood. It was a lot of gold, lots of beautiful things. And we only saw like eight rooms in this huge mm. palace. Then we go outside, it's hot as hell. And yes. we have about an hour as part of the tour to, to see the grounds. And we went over to the left away from everyone. And we we're like, oh, this is cool. And as we're walking, I'm like, how, how big is this? Yeah. It's like, it's freaking huge. You have to be on golf carts to see the whole thing. And just wow. imagine like, just getting away from other people or not just not seeing people because the palace yeah. is so big and you're 19 years old or you're 20 mm-hmm. and it's like what do you do with your time what do you learn what are your hobbies besides pretending to be a milkmaid but <laughs> yeah i mean you were probably just called to do things that you needed to be a presence at i mean waving I- <laughs> <laughs> i mean really besides being the- presented did, parties yes. that they had that yes. were extravagant Mm -hmm. balls where they invited other people. So, I mean, yeah, what do you do? But here's the thing. When you live in a palace and you like to socialize, you can't really socialize unless you have some ladies in waiting or some besties, right? True. So it appears that Marie Antoinette had two best friends that she valued very much. I found this really cool blog called Tea at Trianon. And here I found an interesting quote from Marie Antoinette's last letter she sent to her sister-in-law, Madame Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. Quote, happiness is double when shared with a friend, unquote, or well, hashtag. nice. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, ooh, Marie Antoinette, you are a girl after my own heart. Yeah. You know, I was like, look at that friendship stuff. Love it. Uh, the blogger went on to say that friendship was intrinsic to the queen's happiness and she placed a high value on friendships. Mm-hmm. Although she was not always prudent in her choice, of companions. So, oh. I mean, again, what kind of choices are we making when we're 20 and we're queens? I don't know. Well, who wanted to be, I mean, who wanted influence, right? Yeah. And who would want to be friends with Marie Antoinette? The yeah. yeah. So you're going to get probably some people who are shady. Shady or just, uh, yeah. Uh, and she's just almost <laughs> looking for any sort of companionship that she can find. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that she did do horrible things and that the French people didn't have an issue to overthrow the monarchy. Sure. But I also can relate to this idea of not having anyone around and not just complete, utter, like, loneliness and boredom all at one time. And And who uh, do you relate to? Who do you relate to? And I don't – I mean, she didn't ask to be the queen, I imagine. And even if she did – 
I mean, 16-year-olds usually want to be princesses, right? Isn't that what they get called by their parents? Oh, my little princess. Yeah, yeah. right. That's what I call Bernie. Yeah, right. (laughs) And you don't want the true responsibility of... You just You're like, like I want like to I want the sweet sixteen party like on um, MTV, but <laughs> yeah. Other than bring that, bring me a car with a bow on it, <laughs> right? Other than that, I don't want to be responsible for this kingdom. No, thank yeah, you. No, thank you. No, yeah. Hard pass. Right. So I love this. She wasn't always prudent in her choices, so it's sort of like snap. Marie Antoinette had a squad like she's a Taylor Swift mm. or a Kardashian who had their own drama. Yeah, and much like them, maybe her besties weren't the best for her. Right. Oh. And that could be some problems ahead. Yeah. So who were Marie Antoinette's ride or dies? Yeah. And literally their ride and dies. Oh. <laughs> okay. So before we get there, this is my public and formal apology to the people of France. <laughs> Very <laughs> and, nice. And my people, um, because as I discovered recently through Ancestry.com, yeah. my dad, the background of my dad's family is French. So woohoo. Cool. And I'd also like to apologize to language. <laughs> For the master butcher job on your words and names that I'm about to do on this particular well, show. Don't hurt yourself too much because we don't make it easy. <laughs> Language I, doesn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, who's we? Right, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. So I have practiced the pronunciations um, and I have a little cheat sheets, uh, but they just don't roll off my tongue. So I think this is, I was reflecting on this. This feels like a good moment. We had a PSA earlier. Here's the yeah. second one of today since I don't have sponsors yet. Yeah. If you'd like to sponsor Best Forevers, feel free to email me at bestforeverspod at gmail.com. Um, second PSA of the day is I think everyone should learn a language early on because it becomes harder oh. and harder to learn as you get yes. older. And what follows is Exhibit A in the case of Elisa Lucas versus people who hate people who can't pronounce things. <laughs> and as an advisor, an academic <laughs> advisor, I appreciate that too because really students should be learning. Language. Another, like, yeah. 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 For certain, I mean, for certain things. But, for, yeah. for life. Life, yeah, really. <laughs> for a podcast. <laughs> right. You never know. You never, you you just never, never know. know. Yeah. So let's begin with the first bestie, and she has like 90 names. So let's get Mm. going. All right. Marie, Therese. Nope, Tyrese. He was in Fast and the Furious. (laughs) Wow, that we went fast through history. (laughs) (laughs) He's one of my favorites. He is. Um, (laughs) Marie, Therese, Louise de Savoie, Carignan, Princess de Lamballe. We're going to call her princess from now on. Princess, I like it. Because people, it's just, it's embarrassing and I don't want to get emails like Dave Anthony does. Okay, so the princess was born, not as a princess, but uh, she was born in 1749. Well, I guess, never mind, I take that back. To the aristocratic house of Savai. Uh, PBS indicates she was married at 17 to the Prince de la Balm. Nope, Prince de la Balm. The heir to the greatest fortune in France. Oh. Now, the marriage lasted just a year. And the reason is because she was widowed at 18. Oh, which my. is, you know, I'm not making any accusations. But the true crime person in me is... You just, you just the tell greatest your head a little. heir of France fortune. Hey. Married a year. Widow. Interesting. Now, I didn't dive more into that because I'm more interested in friendship, but I feel like there's something there. But then I again, in the 1700s, how long did people live? Right. You, you really <laughs> couldn't predict. I mean, you got the flu when you were done. I mean, so. And I got the flu and I was like annoyed. Right. <laughs> exactly. Right. We were, we were inconvenienced for a few days. <laughs> I could Unlike eat others, normally for like two days, and then right. I had to drink some extra Gatorade. Oh wait, I got to Netflix, my favorite show. <laughs> Woe is me. Yeah, but hey, she got off. I mean, she got some money. So, so hey, hey, I guess hey, girl, hey. Right. She then went to become the confidant of Marie Antoinette. Not surprising, giving her powerful connections to the True. French royal family. It was uh, in September 1775 when the Queen appointed. Uh, the princess to superintendent of the queen's household. And this is described by PBS as the highest rank possible for a lady in waiting at Versailles. Oh. Um, quote, this appointment was controversial. The office had been vacant for over 30 years because the position was expensive. Some saw it as unnecessary and gave far too much power and influence to the bearer. 
giving her rank and power over all other ladies in waiting and requiring all orders given by any other female office holder to be confirmed by her before it can be carried out. And the princess, the sufficient rank to be appointed, yeah, she's aristocratic, so on and so forth, right. uh, was regarded as too young, um, which oh. would offend those placed under her. But the queen regarded it a just reward for her friend. And not just a reward, a justified That's reward. Right. And so there are a couple huh. things here. It seems like there is a hierarchy of power, but then at that time there might be a hierarchy of age, which I think we can see in today that when new people come in, yeah. And people start to retire, like there is some like, oh, they're they're trading in the older models for the younger models, you know, right. type of thing. So Right. Or you're older, so you have more experience. experience. And you get yeah, overlooked not- for a position for someone who has less experience. But it's so interesting that that position was vacant for so long. Yeah. And that, again, I think reflects... Marie Antoinette in that coming into the office as a queen, queen. being like, I need help around here. Exactly. And I, need, I need a best friend. <laughs> right. And here's a spot that all y'all think is too much. Yeah. I don't. I'm <laughs> I gonna, mean, it's, it's on yeah. the books, so I'm going to do it. it. I'm yeah. going to do it. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And so it's something that existed, but it's perhaps um, maybe it was an informality that people didn't fill the position because of the the price. Like True. it's like budget cuts. <laughs> Even back then, folks, <laughs> yeah. you had to nickel and dime. <laughs> nickel and dime it, lady in waiting, <laughs> right. the queen superintendent of yeah. the household was was out. So that is her first bestie. So enter. Oh no, I need my. Second. Here we go. You got it. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. All right. <laughs> Yolande, Martine, Gabrielle, D, wait, De Polistron, Duchess, D. Polinoc. Wow. <laughs> I think part of the issue is that it's, I pause between everything and so I stretch out the syllables where it's like, Elise and Lucas, that's my name. Like, I can't say all of those together yeah. because I'm so concerned about the pronunciation. Um, she was not a duchess at this time, but I'm going to refer to her as duchess. So we got I like the queen, it. we got the princess, and we got the duchess. I like it. It feels like a very close knit friendship group. Yeah, <laughs> where they gave each other nicknames. Yes, <laughs> we gave it to them. But th- who knows? They who might knows? have. I mean, yeah. like this was the model for clicks, I guess, back in the day. You know, yeah. and as I was researching, it was like, man, Marie Antoinette is like the Regina George, and like one of them is like the what's her face Wieners, um, Gretchen oh, Wieners, yeah. yep. and then who's the other one? The the one who's <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Grabs our booze. Uh, oh. I have an 80% chance that's actually raining or something like yeah. that. Oh, what is her name? We might have to look that one up. But, yeah. I mean, Regina George has the two friends and then Katie comes in and that sort of thing. And right. so it, it, it felt in a way, and here's the thing, like, cliques are things that have developed and people have tight-knit groups and there's in-groups and out-groups and there's lots of research on it. But as I was reading it, I just felt like this was the original Heathers. Have you ever seen that movie? Yeah, yeah. Right. This was like the original Heathers, like Marie Antoinette was one Heather and then the other two Heathers and then other people wanted to be Heathers. Like, that's what it feels like, right? Just over the top, they all have different color outfits on Heathers, right? One Heathers red, one Heathers green, Mm -hmm. one Heathers yellow. They all, when they play croquet, you know, is that how you pronounce it? Croquet? Croquet. That's okay. (laughs) That's why I'm here. (laughs) Back you up. Oh my God. Like, even (laughs) words I do use, I'm like, duh. (laughs) Tahitatha. <laughs> uh, croquet. Okay. Let's yep. get my grandma used to have that. We used to lay it in her backyard. But even it's like a green mm-hmm. heather can only use the green ball. You know, that's oh, sure. what it feels like when or, I was doing the research. Or kind of, um, I don't know, I just imagined uh, Cinderella's sisters. Yeah. You know, like that, like they had their look and they yeah. were, you know, yes. together. And, yes. you know, there's only two of them, but still, like yeah. how they. You the know? one thing is, like, Cinderella really doesn't have the power until the prince gives her the shoe, shoe right? right? Like, they see her as underneath her, whereas everyone sort of wants to, I think, be around Marie Antoinette. As you yeah. mentioned, might not be because of her personally, might be because of the power that the... She can give them. She or, can yeah. give them, mm-hmm. right? So, the Duchess. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Wikipedia describes her family as one of ancient aristocratic lineage, but Mm. when the Duchess was born, the family was deep in debt, and any images of any sort of 
high life, lifestyle, luxury, or anything like that was more of a dream than it was a reality. Yeah. Um, her marriage to Jules Da Polinac at 18 did not bring wealth. <laughs> All right. Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he was poor too. So she did dream. She dreamed of the Versailles court. And thanks to an invite from her sister-in-law, Diane D. Polinac, she was invited to a formal reception in the Hall of Mirrors in 1775. Oh. When the Duchess was presented to the Queen, Marie Antoinette said she had never seen her before. And the Duchess basically responded with, I can't afford to be embarrassed. So she ain't got time for being poor. She right. can't even afford being embarrassed by not being known by the Queen or right. not. I got to live. <laughs> I got to survive. <laughs> I'm a survivor. <laughs> She's yeah. like, listen, I'm broke in all areas. Um, and yeah. I got to. I got to hold on to my emotions, too. Yeah. <laughs> I got to hold on to my Something. Got to hold something. <laughs> we're rich in those when we're young. I mean, that's yeah. the only thing talking about, like, what were you like when you are 15? The emotions and hormones and everything are out of whack. So I imagine, you know, there was probably lots of drama. But yeah, uh, I digress. Um, let's see. So, okay. So because Marie Antoinette appreciated her honesty, they soon we become best I friends. I could see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like I know her. <laughs> I know like, I got back her. Back in the 1700s, <laughs> I know what was what. <laughs> uh, so I love this blog called History and Other Thoughts that I got an article from. Oh. Um, they had views on how they became friends. Diane thought of the Duchess' simple taste and easygoing manner would captivate the new young queen. And that's what happened when the two women met. So much like outlined in Wikipedia, the Queen of France was instantly dazzled, and that's a direct quote, by the Duchess and invited her to move permanently into Versailles. Oh. So, friends. You know, I love friendship. Yeah. And uh, I don't have a husband that I need to bring along, but if anyone wants to provide me permanent <laughs> residence to me and my Duchess cats, Rooney, and my Duke, Ferguson. <laughs> but... I mean, okay, for, that invite is great, but also, if it could be someone who had a home, like the palace, <laughs> the palace. I'm gonna go get lost in the 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 grounds I mean, for three weeks. Right. See you later. I mean, if I had a palace, I think all my friends. Yeah, <laughs> pick a place. Pick a spot. Y'all could come in. It's a commune for it, friends. friends. Like, hey, right. everyone's invited. Yeah, Woo-hoo. right. <laughs> because why not? But interesting that, yeah, she's like, hey, well, come on over. But there's even more. Oh. Marie Antoinette was determined to keep her favorite, which in some ways I feel like she did value friendship. But that mm-hmm. wording, which could be an author or a blogger or the interpretation of something from history. Yeah. Determined to keep her favorite by her side makes it seem like she's a, an object, like she's collecting dolls, right? That mm-hmm. she's a child. Yeah. And I have all of my dolls, but not from Build-A-Bear because right. no, those lines are long. <laughs> not, right. Yeah, that was... It, <laughs> that was an amazing... Uh, I felt bad for the CEO on that one. I mean, it's. Yeah. I think there's good intentions there and just had no idea. And so they'll they'll fix it up. They'll get oh, some yeah. rolls and, right. and it'll be great. And uh, But that's the thing. It felt like she was like collecting dolls, almost like they were objects. And it's, mm-hmm. what do you have to do when you go to Build-A-Bear? You buy it or you buy a doll. Or I, yeah. my parents bought me a Barbie when I was younger. She actually mm-hmm. agreed to settle the family's many outstanding debts. And to find an appointment for the Duchess's husband. And that's oh. when he got that title is when she became Duchess. Okay. So she did hmm. become the undisputed leader of the Queen's exclusive circle and ensured that few entered without her approval. Well, here's the thing, though. I, I get your point about collecting people. Mm-hmm. But you could also say the argument is, I'm going to keep people who I, who I enjoy, enjoy the most. Yeah. Right. Or who I feel are going to give me the best help or yeah. decisions yeah you who know i trust who i trust who yeah can comfort me the things that we look for in friends that maybe mm-hmm. they weren't thinking about at that time right? right like those maybe not have been to the forefront and that might be mm-hmm. in sense how she could have been a trailblazer in some ways right. is that because she wasn't focused on other things she was focused on friendship yeah. and so in a way like part of me is like i salute you even though you got overthrown in your had got it. Yeah. We'll talk about that Untimely. Later. <laughs> that's well, sad. Isn't everyone untimely? Well, true that. yeah, I That's mean, true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's very, but it kind of suited her lifestyle, I guess. Dramatic. Yeah. And yeah. Over <laughs> the, the top. Next, 
no. dramatic rose or the, the most dramatic episode of the Queen of France yet. Right. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it's interesting. And but you know, when you think about comparing it to now, you know, when you think about uh, any celebrity, yeah, they have their people. Yeah, they ha- I mean, did you see the the excuse me mm-hmm. the music video for Bad Blood where Taylor Swift has her literal mm-hmm. posse? Right. Yeah. I mean, and you got to imagine those are people who. In some cases, you get probably get the, the two kinds. You got the yes people who are always going to say what you're doing is great. Yeah. Or you're going to have the people who are like, like hey, girl. listen. <laughs> right. Which I think you and I would fall into that. Yeah, the latter girl. can't be like, listen, I don't think that was a good choice. I mean, we'll eat this cake, but if French people were literally without bread, we probably oh. wouldn't be like, ah, exactly. <laughs> in their faces. We might figure out how we could get them some, uh, some bread, right? right? You know, if people are starving, yes. we might try to, you know, yeah. problem solve. Right. <laughs> Because that's just sad. Yeah. <laughs> no. But interesting. So. Yeah. No, and I think you're exactly right that there is a level of I just think the wording of it made me yes. think of the dolls, but I think yes. you're you're right that there is, especially in this sort of position of power and celebrity, mm-hmm. that you need certain people that are gonna be good mm-hmm. around you. And mm-hmm. I think that's a lot of sort of what people saw sort of like Amy Winehouse maybe was not surrounded by good people and, and, you know, she was doing drugs and, Mm -hmm. and died and, you know, that sort of thing. And, you know, I just know I've read articles that really say like maybe if she had better friends, but I really don't know. I didn't do research on that topic. It was just the first thing that popped into my head. Yeah. (laughs) Makes sense. So we've got the Duchess who lives at Versailles and her debts repaid by the queen and uh, the princess who has the highest power position for any lady in waiting. Wow. And these are the power click. Yeah. Um, this does make sense given the queen's age, her lack of duties, and thus time to socialize and love her and friends, as I mentioned. Yeah. Of course, Marie Antoinette would want to be a good friend by taking care of her people. And I think that's the point you're ma- uh, mm-hmm. making. Yep. That, and if she also loved them so much that she would want them to be nearby. Yep. Right. The, uh, the Tea at Trianon blog explores Marie Antoinette's need for close friendships. Yeah. Quote, in the vast palaces where she was born and raised amid a many peopled court where she often went for 10 days at a time without seeing her busy mother or her closest um, family member, who was her sister, uh, Carolina, three years her senior. Later, Marie Antoinette, far away in France, separated from her mother, who was always critical of her anyway, mm. tried to find a friend, a big sister, to take Carolina's place. Mm. Both of her closest friends, the princess and the duchess, were a few years older than Marie Antoinette, and especially the uh, the Duchess were highly maternal, right? Yeah. The Queen seemed to grow in emotional maturity and balance after she herself became a mother and had to fight for the survival of her family, end quote. But it does seem like maybe she's looking for, mm. you know, that, that family is probably the most critical at this time. Right. Um, because those are the most people you spend your time with. Mm-hmm. And that her family wasn't nearby um, and she didn't have those sorts of things. And, and as we'll learn in the next paragraph, her husband wasn't around either. Right. <laughs> but that's a good example of, you know, I think there's a lot of, I mean, I think we've talked about it where our friends turn into family. I mean, yeah. that's who there we, are chosen family, the chosen family. And yeah. so for her, it probably was more, um, probably drastic need maybe yeah. than what others might experience because again you're a you're a kid yeah and thrown into the stuff and you know if you got someone who you trust and you can look up to mm-hmm. and who was going to protect you regardless of their intentions at, yeah. the, at whatever time hey you're going to probably do it yeah. so interesting yeah hmm. well and here's the thing Uh-oh. This is- <laughs> uh, plot twist yeah <laughs> Most sources indicated that Louis XVI wanted to keep the queen away from, quote, politics and court intrigues, unquote, perhaps why she has so few tasks as a queen. Mm. So he encouraged the friendships. He thought that the Duchess was viewed as a calming influence and as someone who could guide, who could guide Marie Antoinette into being a good wife and mother. One oh. who wouldn't be around, I guess. I don't know. Right. <laughs> so he's basically like, I don't want my wife around. So go find someone who's going to make you better. Um, but also there is sort of suggestion that her husband's behaviors, um, also as a reminder, he was also young, similar yep. in age to her. So probably also 
emotional, emotional you know yeah. like hormones or just not prepared for this and so on and so forth so many things that we could go into and there mm-hmm. i'm sure experts on just him and <laughs> yeah, what he's totally. did yeah. on one day in the life of right yeah um but that some of the behaviors led her to lean on her friends for emotional support. Mm-hmm. The Duchess and the Princess were her closest friends. The Queen had a group of young women who were companions at the Trianon and participated in theatrical activities that took place there, according to PBS. On the History and Other Thoughts blog, uh, the Duchess influenced the Queen to adopt similar, simpler tastes, much like her, mm. and encouraged her to spend more time at the Trianon, provided advice on marriage problems and child care, and sued the queen in her most desperate moments. So there were times that Marie Antoinette would be sobbing and would summon mm. um, the duchess to comfort her. And, of course, they would gossip about the people at court. And I love that. Of course. Like, right. first off, we got friends. We got ladies. We got lady friends. And let's start that stereotype early on. <laughs> right. But if you don't got anything to do... And you're living the high life, and people, you got mad well, haters. Well, but then, like the like you just said, the husband wasn't going to let you in on anything either. So it's like, I got nothing but what's in front of me. <laughs> and so I'm just, what do you do? Yeah. I, I mean, literally, what do you do besides, you know, talk about the people <laughs> that around are right you? In front right, of you. Right, right. Now, wow. she did spend some time... At the home of the Duchess, which I'm assuming was on the land because of the permanent. But she felt at home with the Duchess and the Duchess's husband. So, okay. But not everyone was encouraging of the friendships. First, Empress Marie Theresa tried to discourage the friendship of the Queen and the Princess. Out of the fear that the Princess is a former Princess of Savoie would try to benefit the interests of Savoie through the Queen. Sure. During her first year as queen, Marie Antoinette reportedly said to Louis XVI, who himself was very approving of the friendship as we as we already discussed, quote, ah, sire, the princess friendship is the charm of my life, end quote. She has huh. so many good friendships. She quotes. does. Oh my God. It's got to be difficult as a sort of, we talked about before, to be in a mm-hmm. position of power, fame, celebrity, and influence, not knowing if everyone has good intentions or the agendas of the, the ladies in waiting would be pure yeah. or with Marie Antoinette's best interest at heart. So I think there were people who were concerned about the friendships mm-hmm. because of the power that those women might have on the Queen of France. Sure. Yeah. So second, let's get to the people who matter most. The people. Yeah. <laughs> the public's view of the benefits and rewards given to the friends was, uh, and dare I say this is light language and very kind language, frowned upon. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it was not. I mean, they weren't clapping for her. Yeah, like, like, yeah you yeah, got some great people. Could, oh, oh, that's that wonderful. Is the cake good? What does it taste like? Is yeah. there gold flecks in it? Uh, yeah. You know, little flecks of gold or you anything? Got, you got heat? Great. <laughs> You got food? Awesome. <laughs> I don't think they were really about, no. And did I say flex? I meant flakes of gold. Gold. Hey. <laughs> like the salt bay. <laughs> 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 That's what I imagine Marie Antoinette when they talk about indulgence. If you're not familiar, there's a gif of salt bay where this guy really salts up the meat. It just Yeah. And I just imagine they were throwing gold everywhere. Right. <laughs> so the entire Polynac family... Um, Benefited enormously from the queen's considerable generosity um, with the, you know, she gave them a place to live, paid yeah. off their debts. And, but their increasing wealth and lavish lifestyle outraged many aristocratic families who resented their dominance at the court. Mm-hmm. The queen is already viewed as lavish and over the top. So playing favorites fueled a lot of Marie Antoinette's unpopularity with some of her husband's subjects, and especially Parisians mm-hmm. and the members of the politically liberal nobility. In 1780, this is when the Duchess's husband was given the title. <laughs> it says, this is a word. What are you going to do? It says, Dud Du Polynac. I think that's supposed to be Duke. Uh, What's the opposite of Duchess? Is it Duke? Duke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it says Dud. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> hey, I don't know. Well, I mean. Yeah. He had to be given a title, right? right. Um, and that is when uh, she became a duchess. 
Um, I've been using that language just to differentiate and not destroy pronunciation. Yeah. But this was a further source of irritation to the court, according mm-hmm. to Wikipedia. So the public and the court are just unhappy. And and not just with Marie Antoinette. I mean, they're very unhappy with Louis the Sixteenth's economic policies. Oh, and yes. All, the, all these they sorts were, of things mm-hmm. that build up to the French Revolution. So. There was just a discrepancy Huge. I mean, we think it's big now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was even worse then. Well, you know? so when I, I, so I texted Tara and I said, if someone didn't really know a lot about Marie Antoinette, what would you tell them? Oh, and she, yeah. she sent me back a couple messages just like, and one of them was like that they were over the top and out of touch. Yeah. And so it's just like out of touch with reality. And I think that's, sort of where the people and the court come in like this just mm-hmm. doesn't you're just way too over the top you don't need you don't need gold bay you don't need gold <laughs> flakes no. and stuff you don't need all these things you don't need to be right. throwing balls and parties all the time and overspending when and then taxing the people right. for example well when you even think about now i mean i was just thinking um friendship wise here's one you know um oprah and oh, her yeah. bestie, Gail. 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 Hell yeah. And how many times did we feel jealous of Gail? Like, you, you're you with Oprah, <laughs> and you're getting all this stuff <laughs> and doing all these things. But but the the difference there is you, we could relate to Oprah. I mean, oh, yeah. she was I mean, much more on our level. Well, she and, started you know, out, you know, she busted her ass uh, to yeah. be where she is today. Correct. I mean, to break through and power up and rise up and get through and – Right. And and so and I also think that yeah, I can imagine people being one girl, but I feel like she also does her own work though and is yeah. her own person. And they're not right. always together. You know what I mean? No. But they can I think there was one time where Gail just like razzed Oprah and like pranked her and it was oh. hysterical. The best one I ever saw was when both of them went camping. <laughs> <laughs> and that just to me First was, off, why does anyone camp? I'm what I you call indoorsy. <laughs> I will glamp like there is no <laughs> tomorrow. Um, that's what Marie Antoinette <laughs> and her friends did out in the palace grounds oh. with their milkmaid outfits and their big cakes I'm, and whatnot. Yeah, Although, I'm sure. I mean, she never said that quote. Yeah. So, but you know, a, a indulgence. Like yeah. maybe it was a bunch of macarons, just Probably. endless macarons. Yeah, mm. you just. Mm. <sighs> Yeah. Part of me was also, I was so excited to do this because I still miss France, even though they yeah. were kind of horrible to France. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so even more, because the Duchess was the Queen's best friend, just like the Queen's, her reputation, too, was completely destroyed. She was accused of being greedy, uh, pleasure-loving, of using her friendship with the Queen to get favors for herself and her family, and of leading her royal friend into extravagant and decadent lifestyle. The History or Other Thoughts blog mm-hmm. indicated the Queen's friend, uh, friendship with the Duchess aroused envy and jealousy of those who weren't part of it. Jealous uh, folks from the court stated spreading all kinds of nasty and vicious rumors about Marie Antoinette and her friends. The most innocent um, amusement was turned into something cruel and lascivious. Uh, The Duchess was accused of wasting the people's money on expensive and extravagant whims. So um, Marie Antoinette was unpopular, and then by association... And by the the perks of being friends with Marie Antoinette, then the Duchess also had some right. issues. I would like to point out, though, that um, envy is typically when we want what other people have. So if people want what Marie Antoinette has in terms of money, power, um, cake, I don't know. I keep saying that even though it's like not a thing. Right. Um, then that's envy. Jealousy would be... If you were a lady in waiting and then these two women came in and sort of pushed you out and right. then you you had a loss of friendship with Marie Antoinette. So I just right. want to clarify that. Um, so a third reason why um, the friendship wasn't always seen as a good idea. Yeah. The views of the queen and her friends led to gossip in the court. So they might have talked about the court, but as I just mentioned, they would spread rumors about them as well. Right. The most common topic was Marie that Marie Antoinette indulged in lesbian affairs. And certainly oh. her best friends, the Duchess and the Princess, were viewed as the mistresses mainly because they were her best friends, according to Versailles Madame, which is a webpage. Yeah. And what I think is interesting about this is that it's like because women are friends mm-hmm. and they spend a lot of time together, they're automatically yep. <laughs> considered to be lesbians, you know? Right. And, I mean, I understand the time. 
and that people might not assume that right away now, but it's just one of those things where it's almost like people create these rumors mm. and this drama. It's the easy dig. Yeah. I think. Exactly. I think it's the easiest thing to say that, well, because they're so close, yeah. it must be this. Yes. And um, that has come up. Uh, there's apparently a new book about Eleanor Roosevelt, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I have to read it because <laughs> I just want to see like what proof, because I think as you've said, and like Sarah said, language is really important. Yeah. And when you see letters and you, and you look at how they communicated, mm -hmm. we might put a tone or our own emotion, emotions. our own feelings onto it. And exactly. that might not be what they intended at all. Right. And that's one thing with history as well. When you read firsthand accounts, what we use as a word today to associate my kinship with you yeah. may not, it deep. wasn't as deep to them yeah. then. Yeah. So it's, I think that's the easiest dig to say. And mm -hmm. it, it does happen, I think, a lot more with women. You yeah. don't really see that quick of a claim for male friendships. Well, I think if they do it, I mean, it's it's the quickest way to insult a man is to call them a woman or, or gay. True. Right? And so- True. But and so I, I do think there is some things there, but I think you're exactly right. There mm -hmm. has to be some level of context. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm even putting my spin on it and then you're responding and, and it's yeah. hundreds of years later and it's like based right. on sources and some of those people might be fans of history, some people might be experts in it. Yeah. Some people might have just collected sources secondhand. Like, right. I mean, that's essentially what I'm doing. I don't yeah. you know, and so it starts to lose meaning. Or um, you have to look at the who said it, yeah. why they might have said, said it, it, what's the context of the time. Because, yeah. you know, if in terms of the court, yeah, they might want to have... They're overturning the monarchy. That's right? it. Yeah, you know, they, they, they need as much fuel to the fire. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is interesting. Uh, by the late 1780s, thousands of pornographic pamphlets allege these relationships. And although, according to Wikipedia, there's no evidence to back up these accusations... They did immeasurable damage to the prestige of the monarchy. Oh, right. there it is. And as you may recall, the queen was completely dazzled by the duchess when she first met her. Um, so the Versailles Madame blog indicated that such admiration um, was interpreted as lesbian affection. And so, uh -huh. like, not being able to separate these emotions or mm -hmm. types of relationships, for example. Right. It didn't help that she became duchess so close to after meeting the queen and living permanently at Versailles. Like, that didn't help the rumors. True. Right. Yeah. So the fourth reason why the, the friendships might not have been good ideas is because there was actually conflict among the inner circle. The princess was gradually replaced in her position as the favorite of the queen, um, by the Duchess. Wikipedia noted the outgoing as social ju uh, social justice. Freudian slip. Right. And social Duchess yes. referred to the reserved princess as a bore, while the princess disliked the bad influence she regarded, uh, she regarded the Duchess to have over the queen. Marie Antoinette, mm -hmm. who was unable to make them get along, uh, started to prefer the company of the Duchess, who could better satisfy her need for amusement and pleasure, mm. which probably also didn't help with the rumors, too. True. In April 1776, Ambassador Mercy reported, the princess loses much in favor. I believe she will always be treated, uh, or she will be well treated by the queen, but she no longer possesses her entire confidence. Unquote. Oh. And then continued in May by reporting of constant quarrels in which the princess seemed always to be in the wrong. Mm. When Marie Antoinette started to participate in amateur theater at Trianon, Milkmaids, wow. yeah. um, <laughs> the Duchess convinced her to refuse the princess admission to them. And in 1780, Mercy reported, the princess is very little seen at court. The queen, it is true, visitor on her father's death, but it is the first mark of kindness she has received for long. Mm -hmm. um, though the, uh, the princess was pl uh, replaced by the Duchess as favorite, the friendship with the queen nevertheless continued on an on and off basis. After the death of her, uh, of her mother, Marie Antoinette isolated herself with both of those friends, though, during the winter to mourn. So mm -hmm. even though it was off and on, she did bring them back um, together, mm -hmm. and they were together um, when she was mourning her mother, yeah. her mother's death. Uh, but eventually... Uh -oh. Marie Antoinette began to tire of the Duchess and the ambitions of her family. There are mentions of quarrels between the two friends, but when the Bastille was a storm, Marie Antoinette, fearing the Duchess may be murdered, begged her to leave. The Duchess refused. She wanted to be there for Marie Antoinette and, the King, and King Louis in their hour of need, but the Queen wouldn't have it. 
Quote, remember that you are a mother, she told the Duchess. Two days later, on July 16th, the family of the Duchess left for uh, left Versailles. Okay. So the King Louis the Sixteenth and Queen Mary Antoinette were unpopular, especially the king, for his poor economic policies. Yep. The country had poor harvest season, issues of bankruptcy, and heavy taxes, and thus the upheaval in France was calmed by his wide by this widespread discontent with the French monarchy, according to History.com. The king was condemned to death on January twenty first, seventeen ninety three, for treason. Uh, treasons. <laughs> what is that? You're right. For treason and high crimes against the state. His death was by the um, guillotine. Guillotine. Yeah. And Marie Antoinette met the same fate on October 16th, 1793. Yeah. Before their deaths by guillotine, political enemies used col- colonies. Hmm. I think I got it. Yeah. To bring down the monarchy and close uh, the close friends became victims as well. Sources not there were a widespread with lies about the Duchess, had people believing that she was a greedy and lewd lady, according to history and other thoughts. Mm -hmm. When the royal family is taken back to Paris by the crowd in October 1789, the uh, princess went with them as a loyal friend and retainer of the queen. When the uh, royal family attempted to free France, uh, free (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yep. flee france whoa oh yeah see that's, that's, that's fast croquette <laughs> <laughs> uh the princess returned to paris where she joined marie antoinette was in prison with her family and um and that was from pbs in august 1792 the two women were separated when the princess was transferred to la force i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly prison in another part of paris The following month, the princess became the most prominent victim of the September massacres when the crowd dragged her from her prison cell, killed her, and then mutilated her body. They then put her head on a pike and paraded it in triumph before the window of the terrified queen with the grotesque demand demand that she be forced to kiss the lips of her intimate. I got all that from PBS, but I also... From a lot of sources, you know, it was, did they actually put her head on a pike? There there seemed to be some disagreement in the sources I read. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, I imagine in uh, 1792, September 1792, that yeah. it, it, her death wasn't pretty. <laughs> right. You can, I mean, if the extreme is the head on a stick. Yeah. I can only. Imagine the in between. In between. <laughs> yeah. Or the less than. It yeah. wasn't, you're yeah. right, wasn't pretty. Um, as described before, the queen met her death about six weeks later. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and um, the queen's death was about nine months after King Louis. Yeah. The Duchess wasn't well. She was devastated by the news that kept arriving from France and the ordeals her friends were put through, and her condition worsened when she was told of Marie Antoinette's execution. The Duchess died on December 9, 1793, in Vienna, Austria. Her family described her as dying from heartbreak and suffering. Mm. But it seems agreed upon by many historians that she died of cancer. So she oh. was probably sick for a lot longer. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, what was happening, um, made it worse. Sure. So Marie Antoinette was described as young, lavish. And as I, to- as I told but, uh, my friend Tara about the episode, as I mentioned, yeah. she was out of touch with reality. Um, they were not in touch with what was going on with the people. Right. And, um, and so I think I did leave that out. But... Um, you know, sort of the upheaval is, you know, the turn of French Revolution is Bastille Day, which was just celebrated on Saturday. And yeah. then the French won the World Cup Woo! on Sunday. But Bastille Day is when they uh, storm the fortress um, and mm-hmm. is considered to be a turning point of the French Revolution mm-hmm. um, and is considered a national holiday. Mm-hmm. And started a lot of revolutions throughout history. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, have a lot of history to, to, to look through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so sort of this out of touch, which led to her own popularity um, and adding in the friends didn't help. Um, and, you know, she had little queen duties or responsibilities that probably caused a whole lot of boredom and loneliness that demanded the need for friends. Mm-hmm. From the Tio Trianon, the, the source I was talking about before, in the last few years, she grew closer to her pious sister-in-law, Madame Elizabeth, who... It was to Elizabeth that the queen about to die expressed her last thoughts in her restrained agony. And what do you think she focused on in her last thoughts? Oh, I don't know. Quote. (laughs) (laughs) That was cheap. Don't worry. We're going to eat this gold cake in just a minute. Quote, I had friends, she wrote. The idea of being forever separated from them and from all their troubles is one of the greatest sorrows that I suffer in dying. 
let them at least know that to my last moment, I thought of them, end quote. And also from the Tia Trianon, they had posted the lyrics that she wrote for a song called Portrait Charmant, um, said to be written for the princess. And of course, I can't read the French version, and that would take like 90 minutes to suffer through all of that for everyone. So I have the English version. Oh, and so okay. I'll read that. Charming portrait, portrait of my friend, token of love by love obtained. Ah, come and give me back the good I have lost. To see you again brings me back to life. Yes, here they are. Her features, her features I love, her sweet looks, her bearing, her ingenuineness. When I press you to my heart, I think I still embrace her herself. No, you don't have to meet the same charms. I wonder if there's a translation issue there, actually. Silent witness of our tender sighs by recounting our fleeting pleasures. Cruel portrait, you make my tears fall. Forgive me for my unfair language. Forgive the cries of my bitter woe. Charming portrait, you are not happiness, but so often you give me the image of it. Wow. And so some of it, going back to the part about the conflict, that some of that might be in their tears, unfair language, bitter woe, Mm -hmm. that there was this image of happiness that occurred when they were friends. And so I find that to be really fascinating that Mm -hmm. there's song lyrics that all the quotes that I was able to find of her talking about her friends or Mm -hmm. that her husband supporting the friends. But I really like this quote from history.com says, what Marie Antoinette was actually like was beside the point. The image of the queen was far more influential than the women herself. That's where it ends. But then I add, but maybe she was ahead of her time on friendship, needing it, wanting it, valuing it, and even screwing it up. Yeah. And that is the story of Marie Antoinette and her two best friends. Wow. I did it. You did it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Right. I'll get better. <laughs> oh, I think that was, I think it's a good one to start with because there's a lot of like, you know, obviously entanglements, but how much have we been able to relate to even now? Yeah. You know, yeah. and that last part that you were, you mentioned about reading the poem. Yeah. Poem, yeah. The was, lyrics. The it lyrics. was a song. Oh, song. Uh-huh. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, song is that think about even, again, we have to point out they're teenagers. Yeah. Well, at this point, that's, well, I don't yeah. know when the song was written. No, but even... She died when she was 37, and uh-huh. the Duchess and the Princess, I think, were 44 or 40-something. So a older. About, right. Just a few years older, but mm-hmm. all about my age. Right. <laughs> Puts in perspective, <laughs> folks. Back in the day. Yeah. But if you think about when they met, yeah. and when we think about early friendships that we had, mm-hmm. I think about some of the friendships I had in high school, and circumstances brought us away from each other. Yeah. And then circumstances might bring us back together. together. Yeah. And I think that's a prime example. Like she kind of had a course with them. Yeah. And, you know, towards the end, maybe really wanted them back or yeah. were thinking fondly of the time that they had yeah. been friends. Um, because it probably helped her get through a lot of stuff. You yeah. Know? Well, it's like we all need friends. And it was yeah. like it clearly she needed it more. I think some people might want or need friends more than other people. Yeah. You know, so she could have very well been someone who needed and wanted friendship from a younger age, oh. being around people or having that connection with someone maybe before right. it was her sister. She had many sisters, I'm sure. And so I think there is this level that she needed it, but also she was given the prime opportunity to focus completely on it. Yeah. No yeah. tasks, no responsibilities. I mean, right. I watch Rich Kids of Beverly Hills. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. some of them have jobs, other of them don't. And it's like they just spend time with each other, you know? Yeah. And, and it's, and there's also perhaps a little bit of being out of touch with middle America or a typical person or a normal person of someone, uh, average Joe or Joanne. Mm-hmm. And so to me, in some ways, I was also thinking about this. It's sort of like when you're in college, yeah. you're sort of in this environment where you might not pay attention to things outside of it. And yes. it's only about certain things. And then you don't have the ability to look beyond it. And it seemed like that was to the nth degree with Louis the 16th and mm-hmm. Marie Antoinette that just not with the people no. and, and maybe the people were never with them and right. like economic policies that hurts people the most. And when you mm-hmm. 
are hurting people economically and it appears that you have all these things or that you're being extravagant or overspending or having a person in a position that's really expensive that hasn't been filled for 30 years, right. you're sort of smacking people right in the face, yeah. right? Yeah. And so it's almost in some ways that they needed maybe an extra friend who was like, come on, guys, let's bring it down a notch. But right. when you're all in that palace in that world, it's hard to look outside. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and I imagine that could be the case for celebrities too, that you yeah. almost need someone who's outside of it to be like, stop being you right now. Well, be real. And, and like <laughs> you said, how are to someone to say to them, you're being perceived as this. Yeah. And whether you are agree. that exi- agree with it or not. not perception is reality. reality we talk about that all the time in communication mm-hmm. yeah and it's a lot of times it could be no matter what you do people might perceive you in a certain way but if you're aware of it and it's not accurate or you think that that's not who you want to be then it's about how you react and how you communicate differently right and so perception is reality they see you as an uncaring cold person right. who is taxing them and you are just hanging out, being yeah. milkmaids, woo, right, right. being the gold flaked cake yeah. or whatever. And I, I imagine that at some point they probably, and that goes into just, you know, monarchies in general, yeah. how uh, you were given this divine right yeah. to be in this position. Yeah. So even if they were told, I don't know if much would have changed. Yeah, that's because true. The, you know, because they're probably like, I'm whatever. I'm the power. This is what God said for them to be. Yeah. this and God said for me to be this. And uh, what does that have to do? God's with probably like, you need to chill out. Right, <laughs> right. And then look what happened. Yes. Uprising. Yeah. To the tenth degree. And then yeah. Go, uh, the good. Yeah. Wait. Guillotine. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> So friends are for. <laughs> I feel like I'm just like I'm done with the words, folks. It's it is, they're not yeah. coming out right. But yeah. but I also think like there is something that I do. Uh, I might have said like I kind of tip my hat to her a little bit. Like there is a yeah. level of me that's like mad respect for loving on your friends. I wish you would have thought about the people or the greater good or that the power that you that you have and the influence and the good you could have done or right. just the okay you could have done to help people survive. But there is part of me is just like, she was looking for good friends and yeah. perhaps needed and wanted good friends. And she may have said, the French people don't have bread to kind of go off that quote. It's, it's sort of like, let them eat cake. And when the people are probably like, you're letting your friends eat the cake. Yeah. You got to be careful because mm-hmm. it's like, friendships can be good, but what sort of influence do they have on the world around you and yes. who you are as a person? Yes. Here's a question for you. Yeah. If you took her example of how she spoke about her friendships, yeah, and if Louis gave her insight mm-hmm. into what was going on, yeah, do you think it might have been a little different? Yeah, I think that had she maybe had some duties and responsibilities that could have, it could have been something they could have done together with the friends. Like right. they could have taken on some sort of topic or charity like whatever the case might be there could have been something that they could have done like i think of first ladies like Uh michelle obama Uh focused on moving and eating right you know that kind of thing and so it's like maybe if they would have had something they could have used their friendship to help people instead Uh of what it appeared to be them helping themselves and Who knows? Maybe as a teenager, she'd be like, yuck, this is boring. <laughs> she very well could have. And again, you know, her right, her position, she's like, listen, this is what I get. Or you know? who knows? She could have gotten there and been like, you need to sit down and have several seats, Louie, and I'm going to run the show because yeah. you are running us into the ground. Right. And so is it a complete lack of knowledge because you don't know what you don't know? Right. Or is it a complete lack of caring to even know what you don't know or what you should know? Well, and I just think the way she talked about friendship, that that softened her image to me. Yeah. I know. I'm reading this and as I was writing it, I was like, I'm making it sound like she is amazing. (laughs) But I would never have gathered that type. If you just pull her friendship quotes and don't contextualize it, as we talked about with history, you have to do. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's like the mother of friendship or the godmother of friendship or something. Like, let's give her a title, you know? 
But it's just interesting to think if that feeling that she had could have been given to the people of France. Yeah, like you know? give them friendship. Tip. Oh yeah. my god. Or like that valuing connection yeah. and support. Right. All the good things that she was getting from her friends, friends. and hopefully giving to to the yeah. friends be I mean, it sounded like she was generous. I mean, but it, she might have been generous with other people's money. Well, she probably was. But I don't know. It, it would be an interesting thing if you could, if there was a way to dive into maybe more people in her circle, but outside of it a little yeah. bit to kind of get their perception of how those relationships really yeah. were. But I think this is fascinating. She could have been a contender. Yeah. <laughs> She could have been the godmother of friendship and decided to be concerned about other things. And so while you were mentioning that, I was looking up um, L.M. Montgomery, who wrote Anna Green Gables, because I'm like, maybe she's the godmother. That's maybe that's my journey is like where in history is the people who valued friendship. And sometimes friendships go wrong. And that's the thing is, I think that separated, obviously, from the politics and the impact on the French people and the French Mm -hmm. Revolution and everything, that there are good nuggets of friendship. But even if she wasn't a queen and the French people had bread to eat and they weren't being heavily taxed or whatever the case is, that in... Typically, people don't like it when you play favorites with your friends, right? Conflict of interest, right? Yeah. And so... I think that most people will be like that. I don't want to have that appearance. Mm-hmm. I don't want people to think that I am playing favorites or I'm doing something because it's going to cause mm-hmm. maybe damage to reputation. Right. It could lead to misunderstandings and mm-hmm. conflict. And so I think a lot of times in our society, we try to avoid that. There's even conflict of interest policies and workplaces and other right. things like that. Um, even in my department, um, we have several married couples who are professors and yeah. they can't vote on each other's personnel decisions. Right. Duh. Exactly. Of course sense. you're going to be like, yes, I approve for my husband or wife to get this because I also want more money. Right. right? You know, right. so so it's like we obviously that might be something that we value. And I'm talking about the U.S. culture, but yeah, but I think that is something people try to refrain from. So I think even if she was taken out of that particular context, that her type of friendship in some ways could be still problematic. Yeah. And I still definitely think that they, from what I gather here in my over imaginative friendship brain, that they are definitely the Heathers or the Regina Georges or like the clicks. Like they are definitely that um, rumors and gossip are, are probably always going to follow them and they're going to, cause they participate in it as well. So, right. so to me, there's a light side and I love the quotes and I'm yeah. like, Oh, she's the charm of your life. Put that on a necklace. You're right. I bet she created the charm on the necece One that says best, right. says yeah, right. Right. but she needs three best see, friends right, forever. <laughs> Which I was just going to say that having the three. Yeah. Right. It could is be always, really interesting yeah. for friendship Chips. because you saw one got pushed out or, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. And then she tired of the other. And then mm-hmm. have they lived longer at that time, maybe someone else would have been rolled in. Or if the right. French people um, were in support of the monarchy, maybe, and they continued mm-hmm. and lived a little bit longer, probably not much longer. But right. she might have had other friends. And right. so it could really have been interesting to see because some people don't believe that you can have more than one best friend. And right. other people do. I think it's a matter of, in, in this case, I think it could have worked, but as you mentioned in your research, that there were so many outside people weighing in mm-hmm. to her on, well, what are they, their intentions or yeah. trying to put scandal where yeah. it might not have been. But- They're lesbians. <laughs> the monarchy right. must be demolished. <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, like- my God. <laughs> lesbians. Yes. Run for the hills. Right. Oh it's like, God. oh, it's but- like, relax. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah. If- Here's the thing. There's no evidence that they were. And even if they were, it doesn't make your situation any worse. No. <laughs> nope. It's still problematic for you right. um, being taxed and such. But yes. yes. <laughs> but overall, sort of my, my conclusion is a little bit of a tip of the hat. But maybe, hey, girl, can we talk? I got some advice for you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Let's sit down and analyze this. And uh, let's be friends and I'll eat cake together. So, Crystal, how about we go have some cake? I love cake. Cake's my favorite. Right? That was the other thing. I was like, even if the quote wasn't credited to her, I love cake. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so great. All right. Well, thank you. This is so yes. much fun, and I can't I wait can. for the next one. Right. Oh, it'll be great. Thank okay. you for having me. Yay. Thanks for – okay, let's just spend 20 minutes thanking each other for different things. Um, okay. But I also <laughs> – I'm ready. I'm game. <laughs> I also just, before we end, just want to say uh-huh. thank you for inspiring the idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited. Can't wait for the next one. Right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Let's go do our milkmaid. <laughs> okay. We're leaving. Bye. Okay. So that was a lot of fun. I had a blast researching Marie Antoinette and writing it up and telling Crystal all about Marie Antoinette and her ride or dies. But I do want to point out that history is not my primary area, Right. I did do research, I cited all my sources, but it doesn't mean I had all of the best sources, right? I also realized that I am not someone who lives in the country in which this happened, and so I don't know all the complexities from history and the context and the impact that it's had on the country and the present day, and that there are some things that I'm interpreting that I might take lightly that no French person would take lightly. And so I do want to say that I understand that, and I also realize that I'm going to lean towards the friendship and be mesmerized by that because it is my area and I love it so much. But I think it's also important to hear these stories, and I can't wait to do more. So if you have a historical friendship that you would like to hear about on Best Forevers, uh, email me at bestforeverspod at gmail.com and let me know, or tweet at me at bestforeverspod on Twitter and let me know who those people are. Send me a GIF, impress me. Send me the Salt Bay, whatever. Um, But Crystal will definitely be back, and we'll add it to our list of historical friendships. Or if you are podcasters who would like to come tell me and Crystal what's what (laughs) or have a conversation about a different friendship, then also let me know. I think that would be a cool collaboration. And I hope that this episode being a little bit different was still something that people enjoyed and maybe thinking about Marie Antoinette in a different way because even though you might not know a lot about her, that maybe we didn't just know a lot about her friendships. And because I realized that I am not an expert today, I went to the Chippewa River Public Library in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, and I checked out this giant biography of Marie Antoinette, The Journey, by Antoine Frazier, and I believe it's from 2002. And this is actually, and this might shock some people, but this is actually my first biography. So I'm really excited It's probably going to take me a while, but once I get through this and maybe do some other research, I might have some addendums to the story that you heard today, (laughs) probably several. Um, There's definitely addendums for those pronunciations, am I right? (laughs) But if you have any stories of friendship you'd like to share for future episodes of the podcast, there's two things you can do. You can email me your stories and photos at bestforeverspod at gmail.com. Or you can go to bestforeverspod.com, my webpage, and click on the surveys tab. I've created a whole bunch of different surveys featuring a bunch of different topics related to friendship that you can respond to. You can respond to one, to all of them, whatever you like to do. But there's friendship origin stories. There's dear friend, any letter you would like to write a friend is something that you weren't able to tell a friend, that you can't tell a friend. I will read that letter on the podcast. You just have to remember that I'm not nosy, that I love to geek out over friendships. So send me all of your stories my way. I want to hear them and I want to share them. People need to hear them. There's also topics related to envy. And if you get in stories by this Sunday, July 22nd, about pet friendships, I'll include it in next week's episode. If you like what you have in your ear holes, there's a few things you can do. I love to have you follow Best Forevers on social media. You can find the podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Best Forevers Pod, and I'm Dr. Elisa Lucas on Twitter. Social media is a great way to follow the podcast for updates and get involved with discussions and other items related to friendship. I look forward to us connecting. If you care about friendship like I do, and maybe like Marie Antoinette, maybe a little bit too much went to her head, but whatever. Um, but if you love <laughs> friendships as much as me and Marie, um, and you want to support Best Forevers, you might consider supporting the movement to love on our friends more on patreon.com forward slash best forevers pod. There's lots of cool perks and goals. Check it out. I love to call you a friend with benefits. And I appreciate all of my lovely patrons who get access. If you are at the $5 range or above, get access to all sorts of cool videos and extra clips and all sorts of goodies on Patreon. And also thank you again to everyone. My mic stand and new mic are coming and I will be showing that off to you soon enough. And whoop, whoop. I have a new 
friend with benefit. It's time to announce it. Ferguson, where are you at? You have a new intern. We have a new patron. Yes. Thank you, Jen, so much for pledging to Best Forevers and the movement to love on our friends more. It means so much to have you as part of the team, and I know Ferguson's going to want to put you to work even if you're at a great distance from us in Pennsylvania. So check your emails. I'm sure Ferguson has already sent you a test list, and he does not accept late work, just like his mom. <laughs> but thank you so much. Uh, so come join us, Invest Forever's on Patreon. I'm really excited about one of the goals that I have on there, and that is to put together a buddy bench to donate to a school, and that is uh, having enough patrons to be able to acquire a bench, a wood burning pen, and burning in all of my patron and supporters' names and their friends' names into the bench, and then it will be donated as a buddy bench to a local school to encourage friendship among all the young people who are looking for connections and buddies um, to talk with at recess and at lunch and just a way to decrease loneliness and increase acceptance and inclusion and friendship. Finally, thanks for listening to Best Forevers. I appreciate every single like, follow, post, and retweet. Please subscribe, rate, and review Best Forevers. It's so helpful for my podcast to get out there so other people can hear it and view it and know that it exists. And it warms my friend-loving heart to know that there are people who like it and want to tell me about it and, of course, share it with their friends. The promo this week is for a podcast all about women, Not Your Little Lady podcast by Allison Carter. And this podcast is new to me. I am just started listening and I love it. So you can join me and we can listen together or maybe you're already listening and you're like, finally, so way to get on top of it. But I totally geeked out on Allison on Twitter. The most recent episode focused on Fried Green Tomatoes, which is a classic. It's one of my favorite films. And of course, a lovely, lovely, lovely friendship movie. So... Just wanted to give a shout out to Allison and Not Your Little Lady. If you're not familiar, Not Your Little Lady is a podcast featuring women living outside of the South's socially accepted norms. Listen and relate as we laugh, cry, and share stories about facing obstacles and how it feels to come out on the other side. We will talk about things that piss us off, the booze we like to drink, and historical women who have made a difference. Topic experts will give advice and relay realistic steps on how to implement it in our daily lives. We'll explore the importance of women owning their past present and future while keeping it light and funny like a lady will do. So definitely check that out. If you like it, share it with a friend and be sure to subscribe, rate, and review for Allison as well. I'm sure she'll love it just as much as I would. (laughs) So think about the influence of our friends and our influence on them. Because without our friends living with us permanently in Versailles and participating in Milk Bay theatrics, who would we be? (laughs) Have a good one, everyone. Hey there, it's Allison Carter. I'm the host of the podcast, Not Your Little Lady. Each episode features a woman living in the South outside of socially accepted norms. Listen and relate as these women share stories about obstacles they faced and how it feels to come out on the other side. We talk about things that pissed us off, the booze we like to drink, and historical women who have made a difference. Through all this, we explore the importance of women owning their past, present, and future while keeping it light and funny. You can find episodes, which are released every other Wednesday, on most podcast listening apps or at notyourlittlelady.com. Be sure to follow the podcast on Twitter at NYLL and on Facebook and Instagram at NotYourLittleLady. Happy listening, y'all!